My audiophile journey really began when I walked into my local hi-fi shop and I purchased an NAD320BEE integrated amplifier for like 400 bucks back in the day. For me, that amp hit the hi-fi trifecta. It was cheap, it worked, and it sounded great with everything. And it's why I'm such a fan of inexpensive integrated amplifiers like the one we're reviewing today. So let's get into the brand new Emotiva TA1 Stereo Integrated Amplifier. <laughs> TA1 is an entry-level integrated amplifier that is part of the newly revamped BaseX line of products. Emotiva promotes the TA1 as an integrated, but some of you may be tempted to call it a stereo receiver as it has an FM tuner, but no AM. What it does have is just about everything a modern audiophile needs. The TA1 has a built-in DAC with optical, coaxial, and USB inputs, all of which support 24192. There is Bluetooth, a built-in moving magnet, and moving coil phono preamp, multiple ways to connect your subwoofers, as in more than one, and you also get preamp outputs. Are you curious about the power? Well, it's rated at 60 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 100 watts per channel into 4. The TA1 is a Class AB amplifier as well, so those of you who were bracing for me to say Class D, relax. We paired the TA1 with a bunch of different loudspeakers, starting with the Sonus Faber Lumina 2s, moving on to the Dyn Audio Evoque 20s, the Polk Audio R200s, and finally the KLH Model 5s. To balance out the various speakers bottom end, we used our SVS 3000 micro subwoofer. Now, I tested the Phono preamp with the brand new Project Debut Pro turntable, and the DAC was tested using the Arillic S50 Pro Plus, streaming digital music from Tidal. Now, I used my iPhone for Bluetooth, and it handled some of the digital music playback, and I streamed music from Tidal and Apple Music that way. No matter what I connected to the TA1, it worked flawlessly. While it is possible to control the volume somewhat using your phone when listening to music through Bluetooth or even the 4Stream app on the Arillic, control of the TA1 really is handled using the included remote control. Let's get into the sound. Well, for a sub $600 integrated amplifier, it's pretty good. And when you factor in all of the bells and whistles into its overall performance, the value proposition is hard to overlook. Is the TA1 perfect? No. So let's talk about that. Straight up, the TA1 is not what I would call a neutral amplifier. It's going to be a bit more forward, not to mention energetic up top, when compared to similarly priced integrateds or amplifiers, even when compared to Emotiva's own BaseX A2. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but for some, knowledge is power. For starters, the bass out of the TA1 is punchy. For only 60 watts, it had no issue extracting low, low bass from any of the speakers I connected to it. The TA1 will help your speakers hit the low notes, but it lacks some finesse when doing so. As a result, you get the punch, but some of the detail is missing. This is most noticeable when you connect a more powerful amp like the BaseX A2 or even the Crown XLS Drive Core 2 to the TA's preamp outputs. Doing this improved the bass, more specifically, any of my speakers' ability to resolve greater levels of low-end detail and texture more clearly. Getting into the mid-range, this is one area where I think the TA1's performance is going to come down to personal taste. The mid-range through the Emotiva sounds a little lean to me, but it is incredibly clear and when paired with a more neutral loudspeaker, say for example the Polk Audio R200, proved to be a really nice combo, livening up the Polk's signature sound especially when listening at lower volumes. But if you are looking for a warmer, relaxed sound from your amp, especially in the mid-range, you're not going to find it here. The Emotiva TA1 reminded me a lot of the Krell KEV 400XI, which was a total beast back in the day, but it wasn't what I would call a neutral sound. The TA1's more forward sound really starts in the mid-range, and as a result, instruments and vocals take a step or two towards you, which you may prefer. Which brings us to the high frequencies. The TA1 sound is largely the same, no matter your source, until you get to the treble. Analog devices, like your turntable, reveal highs that are more balanced and in line with the rest of the amplifier's tone. However, when it comes to the amp's internal DAC, the highs pick up some added energy and can be too much of a good thing with some speakers. 
like our Sonus Faber Lumina 2s. This combo was too top heavy and aggressive for my tastes. But the Dyn Audio or Polk speakers to me were a better match, giving those more neutral speakers a more detailed high frequency performance all the way up to the very tippy top with great speed and articulation. I wouldn't say the sound is altogether the airiest in terms of a note's ability to decay in space, but you are not going to miss a thing up top with the TA-1. When it comes to soundstage, the Emotiva favors with over depth, with its more forward demeanor. The soundstage is nicely appointed with pretty solid definition throughout. As you turn up the volume, it does thin slightly, but it's nothing that I would lose sleep over. Dynamically, the TA-1 delivers the goods. It is capable of delivering real palpable impact. So while it may miss a few details here and there. The Emotiva absolutely slaps when it comes to dynamics. Overall, the TA-1 is a solid performer. It has a fun, lively sound, but what I love most about it is its flexibility. As a standalone integrated, the TA-1 is good. For those of you with speakers from the likes of Polk, Elac, or Q Acoustics, put this amplifier on your list. The best thing about the TA-1 is its ability to grow with you in your audiophile journey. The preamp outputs give it incredible flexibility. And as a preamp, the TA-1 is pretty damn special. Of course, if you already own a separate amplifier, there's the Emotiva PT-1 that you should consider. Another feather in the TA-1's hat is, of course, the built-in phono preamp, which is really, really good, especially at this price point. As for drawbacks, there aren't many, but the TA-1 is not a silent amplifier. Some hiss or hum is going to be heard emanating from your speakers when they're at idle. It's not crown level bad, but it is noticeable when seated close. So for those of you thinking of using the Emotiva on your desktop, consider yourself warned. For those of you that sit more than, say, three feet away, I doubt you're going to notice. Now, while I find the TA-1 competitive, there are a few integrated amplifiers or stereo receivers you may want to also consider before making your final decision, starting with the Cambridge Audio AXR100. For about $50 more, the AXR100 gives you a little more power at 100 watts per channel. It has a similarly specced DAC, but it pulls up a little bit with respect to its Bluetooth tech. The AXR100 still has Bluetooth, but it's just not as new as what you're going to find with the Emotiva. But when it comes to sound quality, the Cambridge is more neutral and more nuanced, and the differences aren't subtle. The Cambridge is not as lively as the TA-1, which might cause some to dismiss it as too laid back, but I'm going to argue that the Emotiva really is just that much more forward. As a result, the AXR100 pairs well with damn near everything, including Klipsch and BMW, whereas I would urge some caution when pairing these brands with the Emotiva. The TA-1 is more flexible for the long haul, but if pressed, I'm going with the sound of the Cambridge. For about $100 more, there is the NAD C338. I understand it's a hybrid amplifier, but like the TA-1, the C338 is aimed at being the best do-it-all integrated amplifier for the budding audiophile, and to that end, it succeeds. While I could see some preferring the Class AB stylings of the Emotiva to that of the Class D makeup of the NAD, I think the NAD has a more refined sound, one that I know pairs well with virtually all loudspeakers, so long as they're not crazy inefficient. The TA-1 is more flexible though, thanks to its multiple sub and stereo preamp outs, meaning you can build a bigger, better setup around the TA-1 easier than you can with the NAD. Now, if you can stretch your budget a little, there is the Rotel A11 Tribute, which has a mildly more forward sound signature, not unlike the TA-1. The Emotiva, of course, offers way more in terms of features, but when it comes to the sound quality, the A11 is the better amplifier. But the A11 costs more, so I should hope that it sounds better. And then there's the new Power Node at 899. The Power Node really does it all. Okay, it doesn't have a phono preamp, but it has HDMI, which may make it a better choice for those of you wanting to enjoy both music and movies. The Power Note is better at conveying the subtleties of a recording, and it isn't as forward when compared to the TA-1, though it does come off as a Class D amplifier when directly compared against the Class AB Emotiva. Like my beloved NAD 320BEE, the Emotiva TA-1 is a more affordable integrated amplifier that is built with future expansion in mind, and to that end, I think it is worth consideration. It offers up a lot by way of features, even if the amplifier inside isn't the best in class. But pair it with more laid back or neutral speakers, and I think the TA-1 is a solid foundation to build on. So that's it. That is my review of the Emotiva TA-1 integrated amplifier, but now it's time to find out what Christy thought of it. I mean, I really don't have too much to add today. Okay. I, I, I liked it. You did? Yeah. I oh, mean, okay. I, I'm still not the biggest fan of Emotiva, Emotiva's 
design language, mm-hmm. but I actually thought this one was a little bit more forward thinking in terms of being a bit more modern. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you can defeat all the blue lights, which, you know, I'm not a real big fan of mm-hmm. was a plus. I guess maybe I disagree with you slightly here because I thought it sounded great with just about everything. Okay. I don't mind forward. You don't. Forward sounding anything. <laughs> yeah. So even on the uh, Sonus Faber Lumina 2s, mm-hmm. I thought it was good. Yeah. They, it, it, that was one of the speaker pairings that drew you out of your office. Yeah. And I, I think on some music, like when we were listening to records with those speakers, I didn't think it was too bad. I really, I really enjoyed that. It was when I switched to, it was when I switched to digital music using the DAC and the Arillic that it was still good. But if there were, if there were certain tracks that I know to have a little bit more forward energy on their own, it was just, it's that two scoops is too much kind of thing. Right. You know? Right. And I know that you're a little bit more sensitive to those things, but for me, I, it didn't bother me Mm -hmm. at all. As far as the, comparison between it and the Cambridge audio, which we directly a would mm-hmm. to me, they were really, really close. Okay. And I know they were, it wasn't as close for you. Yeah, no. Um, but I don't know. I, maybe I'm just not as skilled as picking apart all the differences, mm-hmm. but I, they, they, it didn't, it wasn't like night and day difference. Okay. Um, but if I'm, if I'm spending my money, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with you, I'm probably picking the Cambridge. Yeah. But I'm doing that purely on the fact that I think it looks better. So you're going with the aesthetics. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, for me. Because for me, there's that they're pretty close. Yeah, they are. They are really close. And there's, for what? For what? Like 50 bucks more? It's $49, it, $50 more. It just looks yeah. way better. Yeah. I mean, I really, I know that this is, I know Emotiva has a look. And like, it seems like this has been their thing for a really long time. Yeah. I just it just at some point it starts to become a bit dated mm-hmm. and i wish i wish that they would maybe explore something a little more um sophisticated yeah and i think that the the basex line while still being very much an emotiva product especially with the new uh pt1 and the ta1 because the pt1 is literally the same product it just doesn't have an amplifier so like I said in the review, if you already own an amplifier, but you want the flexibility that I've just described in the TA1 in a preamp, um, it's there and it saves you like $150 or something like that. So it, it could be a very good option for those of you looking to build a budget separate system, because I'm not going to lie in terms of flexibility, the PT1, the TA1, they are more flexible than the AXR100. I'm choosing the AXR100 purely for its sound quality because at the end of the day, once everything is configured, that's my jam. That's my personal taste. Um, but if I'm looking at all of the things that the TA1 allows me to do, you know, subwoofers, multiple subwoofers, and still having preamp outputs, um, an, a, a truly excellent phono preamp. I'm not joking. It is spooky good, especially considering that I really think there are phono preamps on the market that cost what the TA1 costs by itself. And you're basic, if you want to look at it that way, you're basically getting an awesome phono preamp like for free. Um, and so that is almost worth the price of admission for me. But that phono preamp is also on the, on the PT1. So if you don't need an amplifier, you know, there you go. Um, but yeah, I think styling, bringing it back to styling, um, I think with the PT1 and the TA1, you're starting to see them experiment because like the volume knob is recessed into the display window and the display window has gotten a little smaller. I get it that the unit itself is smaller. Which I liked a lot. Which, yeah, it's a very a lot, slim. A really, a, the streamlined yeah. uh, profile was, for me, a lot better. And, and I... I, I don't want to, I want to give them props because yeah. they, with the bit basics line, the mm-hmm. new bait basics line, and with this, this particular product, you can see them, at, uh, you know, putting their toes in their, in the water at, yeah. in terms of elevating the design just a little bit. Yeah. I just want to see them push the envelope just a little more. I mean, maybe come out with a line completely different than mm-hmm. anything else they've ever done with using some different materials for the, um, the, the chassis. Yeah. I just want to see something more elevated. Yeah. I think if they just 
just build a one-off integrated with like a, a DAC or a streamer that just a one, two punch. And it is just that, you know, it's just, that is what it is. And just see what people say about it. I think that would be so awesome. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I think that they can do it. There's a lot of really, really smart people that work there. And I know a few of them and they have a design mind. So I'm with you. I would like to see, I would like to see a little bit more forward thinking. I will say this. I started off this review by talking about the NAD 320 BEE. And granted, that is like 20 plus years ago. I think it was 1999 or 2000 when I bought my first one. Yeah, I bought more than one. Um, at that time, that amp was very feature packed, but we were in a pre kind of DAC streaming music, you know, movie world. And so for an integrated amplifier at 400 bucks to have preamp outputs and, you know, things like that, it was, it was really a big deal, but that was $400. Now the TA one pound for pound is a way, way, way bigger value than the 320 BEE was even back in the day. And so that's really awesome. And from that perspective, the, the, the Emotiva trounces what NAD even currently has on the market. They're like the new, better NAD in, in some respects. It's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. But any anything else? No, I thought it was a really solid uh, amplifier for really everything we use. And, yeah. I, and I agree with you. I think it helps those more laid back speakers. Like Neutral speakers. To me. <laughs> laid back to me. Yeah. You know, I like my <laughs> yeah. my stuff elevated. Yeah. Uh, not just in the looks factor. Mm -hmm. So I think it, I think if you are somebody like me that per, prefers something with just a little bit more, a more of a lively sound, but you're finding that your speakers are uh, just sitting a bit too back, a little too back for you. Mm -hmm. I think this could be something that can help you without you having to change your speaker. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree with that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right. So that's it, guys. That is now our review of the brand new Emotiva TA1 integrated amplifier. Now it's time for you guys to tell us what you think. So let us know down in the comments. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you, it's pretty simple. But what is your favorite budget-minded integrated amplifier at the moment? I know some of you may have some favorites that go way, way back, like the 320 BEE, but at the moment. What is your favorite budget-oriented integrated? Let's get a conversation or some lists going, and maybe we'll help out some other audio files on this channel. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have always shown your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and we both thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and that is it for us today, so remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us yet again, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.